welcome to Literature Tuesday. We're so excited to be here with you guys this week. It is actually Banned Books Week. So what we have for you today is a bunch of books that have previously and currently are on the ALA's American Library Association's Banned Book List or Challenge List. So we have a good variety for you guys, starting with little children's books all the way up to adult books, and we're super excited to go over them with you. Yeah, this is fun, because we get to learn all the ways they were banned. Yes! Which some of them are just so ridiculous, it's kind of funny to hear about, but um, absurd. we don't have time to go through all these great books, but we'll go through a few, and we'll probably read you some reasons why other ones were banned, because um, it's just fun to learn about this. But yes. what should we do first? Should we start with... Do we want children? to start with children and work our way to adults? Sure. So we have a couple of kids' books at, um, up here. We have one. We'll go over this one, and then we'll look at the other one. This one is the Skippy John Jones series by Judy. Is that Shatner? I think so. Shatner. Shatner. This one has books in its series that have made the ALA's banned book list a couple of times for the reason is that it stereotypes Mexican culture because it is a little chihuahua dog and then the references and the pictures and stuff like that that they make in there that people are like well that's stereotyping and not everybody's like that and how dare they put those books out so there is a, that one but the one that we're going to go over with and give you guys a little bit of a couple of pages is the number three on this year's 2019 banned book list of the top 10 most challenged books in libraries universities and schools this one's number three, A Day in the Life of Marlon Bundo, written by Marlon Bundo with Jill Twist. This book made it to number three on the list for the LGBTQIA plus content that's in it and then the political viewpoint. Mm -hmm. And there was also on the reasons why it made the list is that it doesn't give like a warning that that's what it's about. Hmm, interesting. It's been on the list a bunch of times, too, yeah, for lots of years, I think. Surprisingly, has. There was one series, the book was currently checked out that we don't have here, that's made on the list since 2006, oh, wow. like a whopping nine times. Since it's been published, it's made the list okay. since then nine times. And I was like, people, and I read the book, and I was like, this book's really cute. I was on the list. Um, a Day in the Life of Marlon Bundo, and it's really... I mean, the graphics are really cute. Yeah, the graphics are really cute. And like, with these bad, in our opinion, <laughs> or in my opinion, with these bad books, it's really all of how, like, you're raised and your backgrounds and mm -hmm. your stuff like that, but you can't really limit to what you show people. Yeah, and, like, the whole point of Band Books Week is to, like, talk about censorship, and that no matter what, we shouldn't be censoring things. And you can choose to not read them, of course, but it's good to also read them and start a discussion. Talk about the stuff that might be kind of like oh, weird to talk about, because mm, you never know. Yeah, you never know, and how is somebody else supposed to know unless you never teach them? Totally. And we have to leave these open. Well, we'll go ahead and read a couple of pages. I think the illustrations in here are really, really cute, yeah, as you like can see. And I mean, colors. how could you not like a bunny mm -hmm. in a bow? Hello. <laughs> So it starts off with, hello, my, main, my name is Martin Bundu, and I'm a bunny. I live with mom, grandpa, and grandpa in an old stuffy house on the grounds of the U.S. Naval Observatory. That's because my grandpa is the vice president, and his name is Mike Pence. This story isn't going to be about him because he isn't very fun. This story is going to be about me because I'm very, very fun. This is a story of my very special day. My very special day started out like any other day. I woke up alone, but then I ate <laughs> a fine bunny breakfast all alone while I watched the news all alone. You see, sometimes old stuffy houses are so lonely. And then after breakfast, I hopped to the garden to say, or to take a look at the flowers and say hello down there, you know, to the bugs. Hello, Phil. Hello, Dennis. And the bugs are playing checkers <laughs> on the flower, which is adorable. And then that's when I saw him. He was a big, fluffy bunny with the floppiest of ears and the bushiest tail of tails. And he was just a beautiful, 
funny. I was standing still, but being near him made me feel like my heart was still hopping. Oh, the bunnies. Bunnies are super cute. Yeah. They get really big, though, and they get kind of scary. I don't know if I could ever really have a bunny. <laughs> I've thought about it, but I was like, I'm glad you're fine. You do have really wanted. I was like, I'll stick with cats. My name is Marlon, he said, or I said, but my family calls me Lotus. <laughs> it's short for Bunny of the United States. <laughs> it's a long story. My name is Weasley, and my family calls me Weasley, said Weasley. Weasley and I hopped together all around the garden, and we hopped over the daisies, we hopped over tiny carrots there weren't that, that weren't very ready to grow and be lunches yet. And then we hopped over to Phil and Dennis. And then they go, and they continue to spend their day hanging out together, getting to know one another, holding hands. Mm, little bunnies. Oh my gosh, they're growing all together. Like, look how cute they look. Yeah, the pictures are very cute. You gotta love the animals. They want to get married, and then they're told they can't get married. This book is super cute, super adorable. I mean, I see why it's made it to the list, because sometimes people don't want their children to be introduced to things like that. But, like you said earlier, it really brings them and introduces them to conversations. Yeah. So that way you can talk. Conversations are great. Oh, yeah. So... There is that one, number three on ALA's 2019 Most Challenged Books this year. It is available for checkout if you want to check it out, read it for yourselves, take a look at the pictures, see all the cute bunnies and animals. Mm -hmm. So we went, we had a children's picture books. So we next section would be what? J. Mm. Yeah, like Jake Fick or YA or anything. Do we have any of those? Yeah, so okay. we have... This one is Captain Underpants. It's not the book per se, but Captain Underpants books are always making it onto the list. In 2018, it made it to the list for encouraging disruptive behavior. Mm -hmm. So if anybody knows anything about Captain Underpants, la -la -la, flying through everything and destroying all kinds of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so that one's made it to the list of that one, but we have one right here that made it to this year's 2019 li list of the top 10 at number nine. And this one is just one book, but the whole entire series this year yeah. has been challenged. Oh, wow. Before, it's normally have just been like one or like number three in the series. Like, no, this is the entire series. Wow. But that's going to be Harry Potter <clears throat> and the Chamber of Secrets. So this one made it to the number nine on the 2019 list. you want to go ahead and do a taste sure. of that one? And why is it on the list? For witchcraft and magic, mm. but there is also claims that whenever you look into it more that they've used real spells in there. Oh, and they're okay. int introducing kids into dark things that they shouldn't be introduced mm. to and disruptive behavior because, I mean, they steal cars. Right, <laughs> they go do? flying in the air. Well, kind of controversial, but we'll give it a quick Tastier. So if anybody has wanted to read Harry Potter, but they just weren't sure, they haven't gotten to it before, listen up, see what you think, and then you can check it out. Okay, so starts out, chapter one, the worst birthday. Not for the first time, an argument had broken out over breakfast at number four, Privet Drive. Mr. Vernon Dursley had been woken in the early hours of the morning by a loud hooting noise from his nephew Harry's room. Third time this week, he roared across the table. If you can't control that owl, it'll have to go. Harry tried yet again to explain. She's bored, he said. She's used to flying around outside. If I could just let her out at night. Do I look stupid, snarled Uncle Vernon, a bit of fried egg dangling from his bushy mustache. I know what'll happen if that owl gets out. He exchanged dark looks with his wife, Petunia. Harry tried to argue back, but his words were drowned by a long, loud belch from the Dursley's son, Dudley. I want more bacon. There's more in the frying pan, sweetums, said Aunt Petunia, turning misty eyes on her massive son. We must build you up while we've got the chance. I don't like the sound of that school food. Nonsense, Petunia. I never went hungry when I was at Smeltings, said Uncle Vernon heartily. Dudley gets enough, don't you, son? Dudley, who was so large his bottom drooped over either side of the kitchen chair, grinned and turned to Harry. Pass the frying pan. You've forgotten the magic word, said Harry irritably. The effect of this simple sentence on the rest of the family was incredible. Dudley gasped and fell off his chair with a crash that shook the whole kitchen. 
Mrs. Dursley gave a small scream and clapped her hands to her mouth. Mr. Dursley jumped to his feet, veins throbbing in his temples. I meant please, said Harry quickly. I didn't mean... What have I told you, thundered his uncle, spraying spit over the house, about saying the M word in our house. Oh, you forgot magic. the magic word, of course. Yeah, that's what it is. Of course. But I, how dare you threaten Dudley, roared Uncle Vernon, pounding the table with his fist. I just, I warned you I will not tolerate mention of your abnormality under this roof. Harry stared from his purple-faced uncle to his pale aunt, who was trying to he heave Dudley to his feet. All right, said Harry, all right. Uncle Vernon sat back down, breathing like a winded rhinoceros, and watching Harry closely out of the corners of his small, sharp eyes. Okay. I'm going to stop there for now. But pretty fun. <laughs> I love the descriptions. <laughs> I love the entire Harry Potter series and the books and the movies. Yeah. And, I mean, I get some people don't want their children reintroduced to magic, but... Sometimes kids are going to gravitate to what kids want to gravitate to. And towards. it's fiction, so that's always good to remember. And that. it's always good to explain that to kids, too, mm -hmm. that what you're reading, whenever they're grabbing it, is that you're grabbing it from the fiction section, make sure you explain to them that it is fiction. Yeah. So we have our JFIC, and before we venture into the adult section, which I have a vision into myself because I'm oral in the kids' stuff, <laughs> we have one YA book that you guys might already know about, and this one's going to be 13 Reasons Why. I won't give you a taste of this one, but... There is a Netflix series on it. There is a book. Um, this one, what made it to the list in 2018 for addressing teen suicide, which is always a hot topic to talk about. And it's something really good to create those conversations yeah. with kids. So 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher. We'll go ahead and read the insects. I feel like I'll do all this here for you guys. Clay Jensen's first love records her last words. So it starts off to see if you guys even want to venture into reading it. Clay Jensen returns home from school to find a strange package with his name on it laying on the porch. Inside, he discovers several cassette tapes recorded by Hannah, his classmate and crush, who committed suicide two weeks earlier. Hannah's voice tells him that there are 13 reasons why she decided to end her life. Clay is one of them. If he listens, he'll find out why. Clay spends the next night crisscrossing his, um, crisscrossing his town with Hannah as his guide. He becomes a first-hand witness to Hannah's pain and learns the truth about himself, a truth he never wanted to face. Mm -hmm. See, I've seen this. I think I read this book. I read this book. I read a lot of books. I have to go on back. Yeah, I'm going to. I think I'm pretty sure I read this book, and I read, like, the whole series on, or almost watched the whole series on Netflix, too, and it really gets you. It really gets your feelings. But, like I said, it really does start that conversation yeah. with kids that are, even your teens, that sometimes mm -hmm. those conversations need to be had. It's really important to talk about all that stuff. So. Okay, well, adult fiction-wise, I can tell you about a few of them, but we can just taste one today. Um, but there are so many books. I picked a lot of classic books that are um, banned and have ban been banned in the past because it's just so interesting because now we see them as classics. And, it, like, you read them at school sometimes, but a lot of times the ones you read at school are the ones that were banned because your parents, like, maybe were reading them with the kids. So, anyway, I love classic books. <laughs> so I picked a few different ones. Um... Ernest Hemingway, and he has a few. It's interesting when, like, an author has a few banned books, so you know mm -hmm. their, like, writing style or something. Um, For Whom the Bell Tolls, and I think this is A Farewell to Arms. And then if you want to read a book that's, like, perfect for banned books week, I would always recommend Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury because it is, like, all about censorship. And it's a like kind of a sci-fi and it's all about the future and how they're like burning books in the future and that everybody just cares about technology and all this stuff and some of it's kind of eerily similar <laughs> to our life now and so um yeah it's very interesting and it has some like profanity and um like vulgarity in it, and that's part of the reason why it was banned and stuff like that but it's a great book, it's a really easy read, and it makes you think a lot about like the value of books and reading. So I love that one, it's a classic. But the one I think I'm gonna taste for us is um, 
by John Steinbeck, The Grapes of Wrath. This one, I love this book. And it was actually banned because of, like, um, it was banned in, like, Russia, I read, because they thought, um, like, communism was saying that um, in the book, even really poor people have cars. And they like were like, lie. yeah, they're like, that's not a real thing or something. So lots of different reasons, but I read that one. I thought it was kind of funny. So this book is really great. It's about um, the, like, it's an American story about people in the Dust Bowl and their, like, travel from Oklahoma to California. So it's a really great book. I love John Steinbeck. And I'll read just a little bit, bit of it to give you a taste, and we'll see if there's any red flags in the process. Chapter 1. To the red country and part of the gray country of Oklahoma, the last rains came gently, and they did not cut the scarred earth. The plows crossed and recrossed the rivulet marks. The last rains lifted the corn quickly and scattered weed colonies and grass along the sides of the roads, so that the gray country and the dark red country began to disappear under a green cover. In the last part of May, the sky grew pale, and the clouds that had hung in high puffs for so long in the spring were dissipated. The sun flared down on the growing corn day after day until a line of brown spread along the edge of each green bayonet. The clouds appeared and went away, and in a while they did not try any more. The weeds grew darker green to protect themselves, and they did not spread any more. The surface of the earth crusted, a thin, hard crust, and as the sky became pale, so the earth became pale, pink in the red country and white in the gray country. In the water-cut gullies, the earth dusted down in dry little streams, gophers and ant lions started small avalanches, and as the sharp sun struck day after day, the leaves of the young corn became less stiff and erect. They bent in a curve at first, and then as the central ribs of strength grew weak, each leaf tilted downward. Then it was June, and the sun shone more fiercely. The brown lines on the corn leaves widened and moved in on the central ribs. The weeds frayed and edged back toward their roots. The air was thin and the sky more pale, and every day the earth paled. And I really like Steinbeck, but one thing about him is he has really, really long descriptions about like, nature. So I might kind of read. All about the corn. Yeah, I might kind of read somewhere else because it's like it, it's really great imagery, but it's like exhausting after a little while, and it's not going to give you a good taste. So the next chapter, I think there's people a little bit. Um, a huge red transport truck stood in front of the little roadside restaurant. The vertical exhaust pipe muttered softly, and an almost invisible haze of steel blue smoke hovered over its end. It was a new truck, shining red, and in 12-inch letters on its sides, Oklahoma City Transport Company. Its double tires were new, and a brass padlock stood straight out from the hasp on the big black doors. Inside the screened restaurant, a radio played. Quiet dance music turned low the way it is when no one is listening. A small outlet fan turned silently in its circular hole over the entrance, and flies buzzed excitedly about the doors and windows, butting the screens. Inside, one man, the truck driver, sat on a stool and, and rested his elbows on the counter and looked over his coffee at the lean and lonely waitress. He talked the smart, listless language of the roadsides to her. I seen him about three months ago. He had an operation. Cut some pin out. I forget what. And she doesn't seem no longer ago than a week. I seen him myself. Looked fine then. He's a nice sort of guy when he ain't stinko. Now and then the flies roared softly at the screen door. The coffee machine spurted steam and the waitress, without looking, reached behind her and shut it off. Outside, a man walking along the edge of the highway crossed over and approached the truck. He walked slowly to the front of it, put his hand on the shiny fender, and looked at the No Riders sticker on the windshield. For a moment, he was about to walk on down the road, but instead he sat on the running board on the side away from the restaurant. He was not over 30. His eyes were very dark brown, and there was a hint of brown pigment in his eyeballs. His cheekbones were high and wide, and strong, deep lines cut down his cheeks in curves behind his mouth. His upper lip was long, and since his teeth protruded, the lips stretched to cover them, for this man kept his lips, lips closed. His hands were hard, with broad fingers and nails as thick and ridged as little clamshells. The space between thumb and forefinger and the hands of his hands were shiny with callus. I don't know. I mean, very, like you're saying, very descriptive. descriptive. Like, that built a picture of, like, a yeah. real, like, real hard-working dude that has some SFD. And that's kind of what he does, is he'll, like, just build up the imagery for, like, a long time. But then you get to know the characters really well and the setting really well. And you have emotions towards them. And you, like, <laughs> want, you want to keep reading. So, 
you know, I mean, if you really like descriptive imagery, Steinbeck's a good one to go for. Or take a venture into banned books. Mm -hmm. Like, look at them, and you'll be surprised to see how many books really end up on the list and where they've even been challenged or banned at. Mm -hmm. Like, looking at these books, and every time Banned Books Weeks comes around and you see what's made the top ten list, you're just like, but how? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I've enjoyed those books. Like, how yeah. did it end up being on this list? But then, not everybody, it really introduces you to that not everybody sees things the way you see things. Totally. Or not everybody views things the way you view things, and that what you may find offended or offensive is not offensive to them, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Which, it's really opens your eyes, and in the world yeah. of books, people really get offended. Mm -hmm. There's that one quote, what is it, that it's like a, you know that you're in a great library whenever you have something that offends everybody. Mm -hmm. Like, it, Banned Books it really highlights that that whole quote and like, you know what, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and like, I heard a quote, a similar one one time that said like, if you don't disagree with like 60% or more of your library, then you're a censor. Because everybody has different views. Mm -hmm. So... You disagree with a lot of things, you agree with them, but you're giving everybody the freedom to read what they want. And um, so if you... makes it great. It mm -hmm. is great. And if you want books to read, there's like a huge variety, like we showed you, of kids books, adult books, and like lots of genres. So definitely come in and ask us, give us a call, because we can recommend some banned books that you would like. I really enjoy... And make sure you stop by the library because we do have a lot of books that have made it on that list and check out and be like, you know what? I'm going to tackle reading some banned books. Let's try it. Yeah. I know I've seen some of those and I was like, I've read a lot of children's books, like picture books for like story times mm -hmm. that weren't banned when I was reading them or like they ended up being banned or I never thought that. I was like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. <laughs> this book's been banned. Oh my God, it's too cute. That's crazy. All right, well, thank you guys. Make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Whoa! <laughs> uh, <laughs> make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the notification button so you can get notified every time we post a new video. And follow us on all of our social media. We love seeing you guys on there. And we'll see you next week for more Lit Tuesdays. Yes. All right, bye, you guys. Bye. See ya.